protein and peptide therapeutics. Introduction There are just a few molecules vital for the function of cells to maintain human life proteins, peptides, and your body's specific DNA. These biological structures carry all the information necessary for life. DNA is simply a matrix. It is a molecule that, by itself, performs no function. Only when a relevant protein or a peptide connects with a corresponding segment of the DNA will it stimulate the synthesis of specific proteins. This interaction between the two is the key to life. Proteins and peptides act as the workers in the factory running the nanomachines of the body. They allow your body to think, recover, move and perform all other functions. Proteins and peptides are responsible for everything. There is a vast array of proteins throughout nature. These materials are more than just building blocks of the human body. Each one has a specific function, evolved to solve the challenges biology has faced during the natural evolution of life on our planet. Within the human body, there are 100 trillion cells, and each of these cells is comprised of thousands of proteins and peptides. The research being done with these molecules is vital to understanding the intricate biological functions of the human body. Each protein or peptide is distinguished by its uniquely folded structure and amino acid combination, which allows it to perform its specific task within the body. Research laboratories already have the technology to distinguish between the protein functions of bones, muscular tissues, skin and the brain. This area of research began in the 1980s. Substantial progress has been made with advancements in new technology combined with the information gained through the Human Genome Project over the last few decades. These breakthroughs have led researchers to the next stage of discovery, that is the Proteome Project, mapping the protein-based molecular architecture of the human body. With the support of numerous universities and medical research companies, numerous proteins and peptides have already provided great advancements in the field of biomedicine. As researchers around the world continue decoding the proteins responsible for specific functions within the body, mankind is beginning to pull back the curtain to reveal innovative biological solutions that safely and effectively target pathology. With over 30 years of research, Regenerative Cellular Therapy, or RCT, has created a protocol that supports the body's functions with incredible precision. This protocol, customized for each patient, includes proteins and peptides that deliver encoded information to stimulate and regenerate cellular function. It is similar to installing a software upgrade when an old computer program begins to encounter errors. This protocol is essentially rebooting the mechanisms of nature itself. RCT's protocol is significantly different than traditional pharmacological methods, which are focused on only the symptoms. This big pharma style of approach introduces generic chemical-based drugs with numerous negative side effects into a biological system that is already stressed. Commonly prescribed medications for many diseases are actually toxic to the human body and can lead patients to encounter other physical and emotional discomforts or even develop dependencies. RCT is treating the source of the problem on a molecular level by stimulating, regulating or inhibiting the signal pathways of targeted cells using specific proteins that your body can transcribe. This treatment is completely free of adverse effects and can dramatically enhance the cellular function of targeted cells. Peptides and proteins have begun a therapeutic revolution. There has been rapid expansion in the use of proteins and peptides as effective treatments over the last decade. This is an intense area of research in countries such as the United States, the UK and France, as investors are placing large amounts of capital into new development. Many drugs based on this new technology are already entering the market with exciting results. 
this technology has already been developed, tested, and is now available in Israel, Spain, Russia, Mexico, and a handful of other countries. The global peptide therapeutics market is expected to grow 9 to 10 percent over the next few years, with many new treatments becoming available in multiple countries by 2018, according to a 2014 study. This is due to many factors, such as rising incidence of neurological disorders, such as Alzheimer's, cardiovascular and metabolic diseases and the advances in technology that are pushing demand for innovative peptide therapeutics. This is the future of medicine. Molecular Therapeutics Research Recent research in protein and peptide therapeutics has revealed how effective these molecules can be in treating an array of diseases. The analysis of molecule types show that a type of proteins called growth factors or GFs plays a significant role in cellular regeneration. The GFs are simple proteins with different molecular weights, chains of amino acids, and functions that define their particular characteristics. Let's take a closer look at the structures of these molecules and how they interact within our body. Why proteins are not another cellular structure? We know that proteins are the most important element in the architecture of every single cell in the body, and they play a fundamental role in virtually all cell functions. It is known that proteins make up about 55% of the cellular material, and each protein has its own specific function, making them act as keys to the body's cellular vault and allowing biochemists to fight diseases with atomic precision. What are proteins, peptides, and growth factors? The word protein comes from the French word protein, and this from the Greek proteos, meaning prominent or premium. Proteins are molecules composed of linear chains of amino acids, which fold into a three-dimensional structure, allowing them to be used as a key to perform thousands of functions within the body. Peptides are a class of molecules formed by the union of several amino acids through peptide bonds. Peptides, as well as proteins, are present in nature and are responsible for a large number of functions. The union of small number of amino acids results in a peptide, and when there is a union of more than 100 amino acids, it results in a protein. Oligopeptide, from 2 to 10 amino acids. Peptide, between 10 and 100 amino acids. Protein, more than 100 amino acids. Proteins and peptides are macronutrients that support the growth and maintenance of body tissues. They are structured in a coiled three-dimensional chain of amino acids, which are arranged in a precise sequence. There are eight essential amino acids and 12 non-essential amino acids. If we have two different proteins that contain all 20 types of amino acids, it does not mean they are arranged in the same way. The number of structural shapes that a protein can take is more than the number of known stars in our universe. Each of the thousands of different proteins in our bodies has a different three-dimensional structure or molecular shape. The three-dimensional structures that proteins are folded into can be organized into four levels. 1. Primary 2. Secondary 3. Tertiary 4. Quaternary At cellular level, the shape of the protein allows it to bind on specific active sites of the cell to perform a particular function. Another important area of research is the large number of functions that proteins, peptides, and growth factors can have in the cell. For example, 12 of the most important functions are to 1. Be catalytic as an enzyme in the cell metabolism. 2. Show conductive properties through the cell membrane. 3. Be part of the cell structure. 4. Transmit or transport information, such as a receptor. 5. Provide channels through the cell membrane. 6. Belong to a receptor site for receiving information from outside the extracellular matrix. 7. B 
be carriers of cellular information. 8. Translate specific cellular information. 9. Connect one cell to another, building tissues. 10. Act as vital elements in metabolic processes. 11. Nourish the cell. 12. Regenerate. How do peptides and proteins differ? Peptides have a smaller number of amino acids and smaller molecular mass, along with different functions in relation to other proteins of a larger size. Peptides regulate most physiological processes, acting at some sites as endocrine or paracrine signals, and at others as neurotransmitters or growth factors. They are already being used therapeutically in diverse medical areas, such as neurology, endocrinology, and hematology. What is a growth factor, or GF? By definition, a growth factor, or GF, is a peptide molecule or a combination of diverse molecules, such as glucose or lipids. They combine two specific receptors on the cell surface in order to activate, regulate, or inhibit some cellular function or functions. As a result, the GFs are biologically active at cellular levels. We understand that the cell is the basic building block of living things, consisting of several complex elements where vital information is processed to generate a response, either for itself or for another adjacent cell. A GF activates a site in a cell to generate a specific response that could be of different types, such as stimulation, specialization, or differentiation. It can also carry out the cellular division or repair processes. It can modulate the information, and it can also inhibit or exacerbate cellular processes. RCT has found various mechanisms of action for GFs, where the molecule binds to a receptor already inserted in the cell membrane and the desired information is transmitted. The receptor only receives information from a particular GF through a transduction mechanism. When the information is received, the receptor generates numerous responses at the cytoplasmatic level inside the cell. This means that the information reaches the cell nucleus and stimulates specific genes for synthesizing a new molecule, ultimately generating the desired response. Peptide research has revealed that several of the GFs that RCT is using consist of three fundamental action types. 1. Stimulation 2. Regulation 3. Inhibition Stimulation of the cell is needed for it to be able to generate any responses. When the cell is no longer able to regulate itself, then it is imperative that the function be stimulated, regulated, or completely inhibited in certain cases. For example, when cancer cells are dividing without regulation, the cellular function needs to be completely inhibited. Then the cell needs to stimulate or regulate responses directly in the damaged tissue. The three types of functions that these proteins have in the cell give us insight into the cellular activities that cause diseases, such as diabetes, cancer, rheumatoid arthritis, liver and kidney failure, and neurological disorders. It is evident that stimulating or inhibiting some functions in the affected tissue or the related organ is necessary to assist it in fighting the disease and improving the patient's quality of life. For example, neurotrophic factors, a family of growth factors, have revealed that alterations in the brain's neurotrophic support, specifically the brain-derived neurotrophic factor, or BDNF, expression and signaling, might contribute to neurodegeneration and lead to diseases such as Alzheimer's and dementia. The BDNF is a member of the neurotrophin family of proteins that is not only important for the normal development of the peripheral and central nervous system, but also plays a key role in neuronal survival and synaptic plasticity in the adult brain. Altered functionality of BDNF has been observed in different neurodegenerative diseases. 
Neurological disorders can stem from an overabundance or deficiency of neurotrophic factors. The specific neurotrophic factors RCT is using have the ability to regulate the neurons and support normal brain function, regenerate and create new neurons and neurotransmitters, and improve synaptogenesis. Synaptogenesis is the formation of synapses between neurons in the nervous system. These specific abilities make neurotrophic factors a crucial molecule in RCT protocol for neurological conditions. The most important element of GF discoveries are not the molecule structures themselves, but what functions they can perform in the cell. Many of these GFs have an essential role in the proliferation of the cell, can be inhibitors or promoters, take part in differentiation processes, or show anti-inflammatory action. A GF stimulates the cell for survival, inhibits or repairs, stimulates the growth of the cell, regulates, increases the cellular responses when needed, and it can also stimulate the mitosis in a particular pathology. Simply put, if you have a disease as a consequence of a missing response in the cell, you can recover that cellular response through stimulating the production of specific proteins. Simple protein molecules have the capacity to regenerate cells within a targeted area of the body. In just the last few years, researchers have discovered significant GFs in the human body. However, RCT is not announcing names or structures involved in the treatments at this time due to confidentiality and ongoing patent work.